We're following some breaking news right now. Homeland Security raiding the homes of Sean Diddy Combs. This is his home in Star Island. Live pictures where Homeland Security investigations uh, investigators are right now on the scene. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say less than 10 minutes. If you did or whoever you is, TGJ, any of them, the, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. All of these uh, big deviants is all catching hell in Cat Williams might have been correct when he said that Sean Diddy, a music executive, won't be free for much longer. Williams said this during an interview earlier this year with Shannon Sharp on the club Shay Shay podcast. These uh, big deviants is all catching hell in 2020. It seems that Diddy's time is up. Today, federal agents raided three properties owned by scene Diddy Combs. The raids were carried out by Homeland Security Investigations, HSI, in New York, with assistance from HSI in Los Angeles, HSI in Miami, and local law enforcement. The investigation is ongoing, and more information will be provided later. According to a statement to People magazine on Monday afternoon by a representative of Homeland Security Investigations, TMZ reported that federal agents arrived at Diddy's Los Angeles home by helicopter. The case is said to be related to allegations involving human trafficking. A video from Fox 11 showed Diddy's sons, Justin and Christian Combs, in handcuffs outside their Beverly Hills home. Just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say, less than 10 minutes ago. Many people believe that the officers raided Diddy's home to find evidence that could connect him to the allegations he's facing. We will always support law enforcement when it seeks to prosecute those that have violated the law. Hopefully, this is the beginning of a process that will hold Mr. Combs responsible for his depraved conduct. Douglas Wigdor, who is a lawyer for Cassie Ventura and Jane Doe, said that in the past few months, five people have accused Diddy of doing bad things. In November 2023, Cassie Ventura filed a lawsuit against Diddy, saying he hurt her physically and did other bad things while they were together. She said he hit her and made her do things she didn't want to do, and even did bad things to her at her home in 2018. Diddy settled the lawsuit quickly, but since then, three more women and one man have sued him, saying he did a lot of bad things to them too, like harassing them and doing things to them without their permission. Diddy says all these accusations are lies and are meant to ruin his reputation. Cassie used a law in New York to sue Diddy, even though it had been a long time since the bad things happened. She says she met Diddy when she was 19 and he was 37, and he controlled her life and hurt her many times. She says he even made her do things with other people while he watched. Cassie didn't go to the police because she was scared Diddy would hurt her more. She says she finally ended the relationship in 2018 after he did more bad things to her. She has friends who saw Diddy hurting her, and one of them wrote about it in a letter. I feel compelled to show up for Cassie and myself and confirm that everything she described in her complaint about what happened that night is consistent with what I experienced in a statement to the New York Times. Diddy's lawyer, Benjamin Grafman, said that Diddy denies the accusations. He said the lawsuit is full of lies meant to ruin Diddy's reputation and get money. Ventura and Diddy settled the lawsuit the day after it was filed, but the details are private. Grafman said that settling doesn't mean Diddy did anything wrong. I have decided to resolve this matter amicably on terms that I have some level of control," Ventura said in a statement I want to thank my family fans and lawyers for their unwavering. Meanwhile, Combs said, We have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Cassie and her family all the best love following that. Four more people have come forward with claims against Diddy's settlement. Lisa Gardner filed a lawsuit on November 23, just before the Adult Survivors Act expired. In the lawsuit, Gardner claims she and a friend met singer-songwriter Aaron Hall at an NCA Records event in 1990 or 1991. They later went back to Hall's apartment for an after-party, where Gardner claims she was offered more drinks and coerced into having an intimate relationship with Combs. Combs also allegedly essayed her friend. The lawsuit claims Gardner was left shocked and traumatized by the encounter, and as she was getting dressed, Hall allegedly barged into the room, pinned her down, and forced her to have a sexual encounter. Gardner says Combs visited the house. She shared with her friend a few days later, and he allegedly attacked her once more. According to the lawsuit in another complaint filed the same day, he searched for the friend at the house because of concern that she would tell the female he was seeing at the time. 
Dickerson Neal claims that in 1991, she reluctantly went on a date with Combs, who purposefully drugged and essed her after their dinner. She also claims that the assault was captured on camera and was shown to others, although Neal did not report the incident to the police right away. She eventually filed a police report in New York with an unidentified agency. New Jersey prosecutors allegedly told her in the lawsuit that they would have to verify her claims, but she thinks it's possible witnesses were afraid that comms would sue them and that they would lose opportunities for music and business if they made a statement supporting her account. A Diddy spokesperson accused the two women of fabricating their claims and accused them of taking advantage of the Adult Survivors Act. A fourth lawsuit was filed on December 6 by a different woman, who was identified in the complaint as Jane Doe, claiming that in 2003, when she was 17 years old, Combs, his longtime Lieutenant Parv Pierre, and a third person who remained anonymous as a suspicious group joined forces against her at Combs' Manhattan recording studio. In addition, Pierre, the former president of Combs Bad Boy Entertainment, is being sued by a former assistant who claims he exploited and embezzled her on multiple occasions between 2016 and 2017. The lawsuit asserts that the men crossed state lines in a private jet from Detroit to New York City, peddling drugs and alcohol to the minor. Rodney Lil Jones, who worked on Cum's most recent album Love and lived with him from September 2022 to November 2023, filed a federal lawsuit against the mogul in February. Jones claims he was the victim of constant unsolicited and unauthorized touching of his behind by Mr. Combs. On one occasion, the lawsuit claims Jones woke up naked and disoriented in bed with Combs. Until she couldn't consent, he violently sagged her and told them to stop. The complaint also includes several photos that Dew alleges were taken at the studio that night, one of which shows her sitting on Combs' lay, and two employees claiming the music mogul gave him drugs. The lawsuit further asserts that Jones, in his capacity as Combs' videographer, obtained hundreds of hours of video and audio recordings showing Combs, his employees, and his guests indulging in grave illegal activity. The illegal activity, according to the lawsuit, includes obtaining drugs, enticing workers to serve young people lace drinks, and saying Jones's lawsuit identified a number of other defendants, including Combs' son Justin Combs' chief of staff Christina Coram, Sir Lewin Grange, CEO of Universal Music Group, and Ethiopia Hab, the former CEO of Newtown Records, to Mariam Combs attorney Shan Hawley denied. The allegations of Jones despite the vast, unquestionable evidence that his assertions are wholly untrue, Diddy has refuted every accusation made against him. Enough is enough Diddy said in a statement for the last couple of weeks I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday, let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. Despite Diddy's denial, there have been consequences because of the accusations against him. In late November, Diddy temporarily stepped down as chairman of Revolt, the media company he started in 2013. Even though he wasn't actively involved in the company before, this move was made to keep the focus on creating meaningful content for black people. A charter school he opened in 2016 also ended its partnership with him. A reality show about Diddy and his family, which was in the works at Hulu, was cancelled too. Fans are pleased that law enforcement is taking action against Diddy. Karma never misses it may have taken nearly 30 years but the chickens have finally come home to roost.